All right, you guys. Well, today I have this 2017 Porsche Macan Turbo. Very nice car. Probably one of the nicest cars I've driven, to be honest. And considering this is a turbo, this is the top of the line. 3.6 liter turbo V6, 400 horsepower, very quick. Do have these 20 inch wheels with the red brake calipers. Going around the back here, you do have the quad exhaust, which looks very good. Very eye-catching color. Really good styling to it. We will pop the hood. All right, it's kind of interesting too, the um, housing around the headlights lifts up with the hood. And when you get under here, you see a lot of this stuff is kind of covered up, but uh, it's still a pretty nice looking engine. 3.6 liter V6 turbo. As I said, 400 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. Very good numbers, but we'll close up the hood here. And we'll have a look at the cargo area. Interesting location for the tailgate opener under that windshield wiper. But a uh, cargo area is pretty good, as you can see. Not. Not like a full size SUV or something, but still a good, good amount of space in here. You do get a spare tire under here, and you also get this nice cargo cover. Pretty high quality overall, but we'll close the trunk. Closes pretty fast, as you can see. Really love the design of this back end here. We'll hop into the back, show you guys the back seats. All right. Yeah, it's a little bit cramped, to be honest. This is like where I would sit, and I struggled a bit to get back here. You do have heated rear seats back here, which is nice, and you also get two USBs. It's a pretty nice back seat. There's good materials. It's just not the most roomy, but you kind of expect that. This is like a smaller crossover, but we'll hop out. We'll hop into the front, show you guys some of the features. Now this Macan Turbo does not have push to start. You do have to put your foot on the brake and put the key in and turn it. You'll find there's not a lot of screens you have to go through to do stuff. Um, you have a lot of buttons down here that basically control everything. These buttons can be a little bit intimidating at first, but once you get used to them and figure out how everything works, it's all very simple, very easy. But I'll start with the screen really quick right here. Uh, it's a standard infotainment screen. There's not a whole lot in here. Um, you go into car, you adjust your basic car settings. Even this infotainment screen is controlled by a lot of these buttons right here. But to go home, you hit the home button. You do have a map in here and it looks pretty good. It's actually pretty responsive, as you can see. Not too bad. Some of the features in this car can be a little bit complicated. Like if you just want to tune a radio station, I mean, you have to start by going, you know, to tune and then you have to hit tune right here. I don't believe there's any seek track button on this steering wheel. Um, I tried looking, but it seems to be there's only a volume control. So if you want to seek a new track, you are kind of limited to these buttons or the dial. You do have your media where you can connect your Bluetooth. You do have um, a little screen that kind of shows your compass, your radio, sort of gives you all the information you want at once. Uh, this car does have Apple CarPlay, which is pretty nice. Down here, this is how you adjust your climate control. You control the temperature here and the fan speed here. You do have dual zone climate control, so these functions are basically the same on either side. You do have this nice shifter for the seven speed PDK dual clutch. Pretty nice shifter. I think it's nice that they put like a more traditional type of shifter in here. Um, I do wish it had a button more on the back of it rather than on the top. It's a little bit awkward like trying to push this sometimes, uh, but that's only a little nitpicky complaint. As you can see, here's your backup camera. Pretty standard, decent resolution, but uh, nothing fancy with this backup camera. It works, but we'll put it in park there. You do have your heated seats and you also have your cooled seats right here. Kind of interesting, you can turn them on at the same time. You do have your sport button. Uh, this sport button basically alters like the transmission and throttle response. 
You can also put it in Sport Plus, which like really tunes it up. Um, you also have a suspension icon right here. And you have three options for your adaptive suspension. So you have Sport Plus, you have Comfort, and you have Regular Sport. I've just been leaving it in Regular Sport. I think that's like the best mode for this car. You have your traction control off. Uh, kind of interesting, you also have an off-road mode right here. You do have a self-steering assist. Uh, for some reason, this kind of defaults to being on every time I start the car. I usually turn it off because I find it's a little bit intrusive, like the car wants to tell you where to go more than you do. Um, so I usually turn that off. You also have auto start stop. Your center console is um, pretty tiny, you know, not bad, uh, but definitely on the small side. You get a USB and a power outlet in there. And in this little compartment, you do have a CD player and a few SD card slots. Over here, you have your glove box, uh, pretty decent. You also have a panoramic roof, which um, will open the shade. Uh, pretty nice, uh, lets a lot of nice light in here. Steering wheel is very nice. It feels very high quality. Everything feels put together really well. Very solid overall. You do have this nice little stopwatch thing. I believe this is part of the Sport Chrono package. It's a nice high quality touch there. I like how it looks. This is a pretty expensive car, I believe. The Macan Turbo starts around like 80,000. Definitely pricey, uh, so kind of expect it to feel nice in here, and it does for sure. You do have a center screen in the gauge cluster. Uh, you can check out your map. You can check out your phone information, your audio. Uh, vehicle information, you can look how much uh, PSI the turbo is making. Also like your engine temperature, oil pressure, pretty cool. You get a lot of information in this screen. The gauges are analog, but you do get that little screen in there. I like the look of these gauges. I think they look very high quality. Um, you don't necessarily need to have a screen to make these look good. Seats are very nice. Uh, as you can see, nice high quality leather. Uh, very thickly bolstered. They really hold you in place. A nice change of pace from all the screens. They give you a lot of physical controls. But I want to show you guys how this car drives. So we'll get it out on the road here. We'll put it in sport mode. As you can see, those revs just kind of shoot up right when you put it in sport. One thing you notice is it has that typical Porsche engine sound to it. A lot of Porsches have like a specific uh, sound to them when they accelerate. And this car kind of carries that tradition. As you can see, very quick. Uh, one thing that surprised me about this Porsche Macan that I wasn't expecting was uh, this car feels so smooth. Like it actually feels really smooth and really luxurious to drive. I thought it was gonna like ride harsher, but this is a very smooth, very pleasant ride, surprisingly. If anything, uh, I would say this car is a little bit more tame than I thought it was going to be. It really, like, when you're not hitting it super hard, it really feels like a normal car for the most part. Of course, it does zip around really nicely and delivers, like, smooth, seamless acceleration. The steering is a little bit on the light side. It does firm up pretty nicely, like when you're going around corners and stuff. Uh, and when you hit some higher speeds, it's uh, decently weighted, pretty controllable. But a lot of the time, it just feels a little bit light. Um, wasn't really expecting that. I was expecting it to feel like really heavy and like really sharp. Um, and it is a very precise steering. It's just lighter than I thought it was going to be. Honestly, there are times where it's like a little bit hard to tell you're even going fast.
You know, I do like this PDK. Pretty much all of these performance cars have really good automatic transmissions. Um, and this PDK is pretty much no different. It does shift nice and quick. It's pretty smooth for the most part when it shifts. Pretty intuitive. I like the crackle and the exhaust when it shifts. It's all very uh, sharp, very tuned in. The throttle response is actually a little bit on the soft side. I find that you do have to give it a little more pedal than some other cars out there. Uh, but once you, um, once you get into it, the car really delivers nicely. The brakes are also fairly sharp. The pedal itself is a little bit uh, on the lighter, looser kind of side of things. Uh, but brakes kick in really sharp, actually, as you would expect for like a performance car. I do sometimes wish the brakes were a little more refined. Uh, sometimes I step on them and like the car will kind of like lurch to a stop a little bit suddenly. Um, but that's kind of like the reality of a car like this. Kind of have to expect things like that. But yeah, it's just gliding down the road right now, like very smooth ride, nice and quiet in here. It really is a luxury car. The steering is pretty responsive, has that kind of like darty feel to it. Kind of just like point wherever you want the car to go like really easily. I do wish the communication, like the overall feel uh, was a little bit better. That Jaguar F-Pace I drove, I thought that steering felt a little bit better than this. Which I wasn't really expecting, you know, you'd think a Porsche would have like the best steering in the game, but maybe it's just like the Macan Turbo, like it's an SUV. They probably couldn't make it like totally sporty and sharp, but uh, that's not to say this is a bad car to drive. I mean, I'll show you up here a little bit. The cornering is just amazing, like really good. I also have good visibility in here. It's really easy to see out of this car. Um, this front hood slopes down nicely, big tall windshield, really thin pillars, overall like no visibility complaints at all. Right now I'm just kind of really feathering the gas and it's uh, just, it feels like it's ready to tear up and get up and go. Especially in sport mode, it's just like always wants to spring into action, it feels like. We'll turn onto this side street here and check out our turning radius. All right. All right, you know, about normal. Not bad, not particularly impressive either. Looks like we have a clear road. Wow, it's really quick, really smooth as well. And just look at that handling, wow. That's probably the best out of any SUV I've driven feels like a roller coaster. I can't wait to do that again, actually. All right, here we go, another corner. Yeah, it's really sharp, really good. grips like you would not believe. Wow. Yeah, fantastic. 
This definitely sets the benchmark for me in terms of handling. Got a clear road in front of us to uh, hit it. Wow, yeah. This is a good car. You know, I started off thinking it was a little bit tame, but when you really start to experiment with going through some corners in it, uh, it's a real blast to drive. And that exhaust just sounds amazing. It's also a really noteworthy trait of this Porsche Macan. Um, never quite driven a car with an exhaust that impressive, let alone like a crossover SUV. It is like a little bit uh, on the heavy side, but you know, I've never, this is like very sports car like. All right, we're gonna take it on 309 here. This amazing handling, love that. Okay, <laughs> wow. Okay. It gets up and goes. Corners super sharp, like it's it's really good. It's a really good car. Um, we'll take this exit here, this last minute exit. We'll try out these brakes. All right, very good. I didn't push them all the way, but I could tell this thing could stop on a dime, like no problem. We'll try getting back on the highway here and uh, let's try Sport Plus. Put the uh, suspension. All right. Whoa. All right. Those shifts are very aggressive in Sport Plus. All right. Engine really revs high in Sport Plus. Um, I'll put it back in Sport just to uh, reduce the revs a bit. Give you guys a few bonus acceleration runs here. It's gonna slow down a little bit. You know what, let's do like a full on like zero to 60. Dang. Crazy. We'll test out some corners up here.
yeah. As I said, just very, very good handling. I think I'll end the video up here. Very fun car, it definitely lives up to the Porsche name. All right, yeah. I mean, what else can I really say? You know, I thought, is this car gonna live up to the hype? And then when I really started driving it, experiencing the handling and the acceleration, yeah, I I'm very impressed. It's very fast, really smooth power band, and overall, just a really nice, luxurious car. Nobody does it quite like Porsche, honestly. This car inspires a level of confidence that you probably won't find in any other SUV on the market. But we're gonna hop out, we're gonna shut it off. All right, thanks for watching everyone.